to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Maharani Gayatri Devi of Jaipur was considered to be one of the most beautiful and glamorous women of her time. A princess of Kuch Bihar who became the third wife of Maharaja Savai Man Singh of Jaipur, Gayatri Devi defied convention and made a name for herself on the national stage as an educationist and a politician. While her autobiography, A Princess Remembers, first published in 1970s, remains extremely popular even today, a recently released book, The House of Jaipur, by author John Zubrowski, throws fascinating insights into the lesser-known aspects of Maharani Gayatri Devi's personal life. We spoke to John to know about the life of this enigmatic Indian royal. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this uh, interview. I would like to start by asking, there were so many uh, royals and Maharajas and Maharanis in India. So what is it that makes uh, Maharani Gayatri Devi of Jaipur so enigmatic? Okay. Sure. Look, there are so many uh, Maharajas and Maharani's, Nawabs, Nizams, and so on in India. And Jaipur not even uh, wasn't even one of the uh, most important states. It was it only it was a seventeen gun state, uh, so uh, a bit down in the pecking order. But uh, the story of Jaipur is a compelling one, and that's mainly because of Gayatri Devi, Aisha, as she was known to uh, uh, family and friends. And uh, to li a large extent, I guess it's because of her book, A Princess Remembers, a memoir, ghost written, of course, not written by her. And, uh, and plus, because of her marriage to uh, Jai Singh, to Jai, they were India's glamour couple. They, they were, you know, they, 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 they strutted the world stage. They mixed with uh, celebrities from the Queen of England, uh, presidents of the United States, European aristocracy, the polo set, uh, all of those people, the Mount Battens, everyone, you know, who was anyone, uh, was a friend of the Jai Paws. And, uh, and, and, you know, and she was, she was a, a ravishing beauty. Uh, and she was uh, uh, eloquent, articulate. Um, she bucked the system. Uh, you know, it took her a, a little bit of time, but she, you know, she established... Uh, herself as a politician in her own right. She did a lot of charity work. She um, championed uh, girls' education. She promoted arts and crafts in Jaipur. She fought for the preservation of Jaipur's heritage. All these things. I mean, she was a larger-than-life character. She was definitely the face of Jaipur. Now, Maharani Gayatri Devi is famous as you know, the Maharani of Jaipur, and she's also associated with the house of Jaipur and the Jaipur royal family. But, uh, you know, what is not well known is that she, you know, she is the granddaughter of the famous reformers uh, Maharaja Sayajirao Gayakwad of Baroda and the great uh, mm -hmm. granddaughter of the Bengali social reformer uh, Keshub Chandra Sen. So how much of her mm -hmm. early life in Kuch Bihar uh, and uh, Baroda uh, influenced what she became later in life? Look, a, a lot, you know, as you know, Baroda was one of the most liberal of all of the Indian princely states. Sayaji Rao was a very far-sighted ruler, um, you know, introducing compulsory education. He only had the one uh, for, for, uh, for, for, for children. He only had the one wife, which was unusual in those days for, for Indian princes, Indian rulers. Um, his wife, Chimnabai, was also, so she was... Uh, uh, one of India's early feminists, perhaps. Uh, she also championed uh, women's rights in, in Baroda. And on her uh, mother's side, of course, uh, um, uh, Indira Devi of Kuchbaha, she was also a, an incredibly uh, uh, strong and powerful figure, uh, a woman who was really quite ahead of her time. So these two influences, uh, and, and Kuchbaha too, was considered perhaps 
the, one of the most anglicized of the Indian princely states. So you had uh, uh, a, 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 a terrific pedigree, if, if you like, um, her, on, on her mother's side uh, being from Baroda, marrying into the Kuchbaha family, and then uh, you know that Kuchbaha heritage being very much an influence on her uh, upbringing and particularly her mother's very strong personality. Uh, when, when her husband died, she fought very hard against a considerable amount of opposition from the British to become the regent of Cooch Baha. Despite the uh, misgivings and constant criticisms of her behavior, the fact that she was always uh, spending more time in, in, in England than she should have been in Cooch Baha, you know, she did a, a pretty good job of, of ruling that state. So she had a huge influence on, on her daughter. So how does this uh, princess from a very modern, progressive, westernized uh, royal house of Cooch Baha agree to become the third wife of uh, the Maharaja of Jaipur, you know, into a very married, into a very conservative uh, society. Mm. So how, how does that happen? Mm. Well, that, that is one of the uh, uh, real enigmas of this story, and it's not really explained in her book. I mean, uh, uh, her, her um, romance with Jai, which begins at a very early age of around uh, 13, when he first comes and visits the family in, in Calcutta, through to their marriage, is reads like a fairy tale, of course. I mean, it's a, a teenage crush, turns into a full-blown blown romance. Uh, you know, he uh, proposes to her as they're driving in his Bentley around Hyde Park. Uh, you know, it, it, is, it is really the stuff of, of fairy tales. But you have to ask yourself exactly that question. I mean, she knew, obviously, what she was getting herself into. Elder brother, Baya, the Maharaj of Kujbaha, warned her not only about the fact that she would be uh, going, you know, that, ja that Jaipur was a very conservative Rajput state, she would be going into Purda, but also warned her about Jai's philandering. I mean, he was, uh, a, you know, your archetypal playboy prince. I had numerous affairs with, with women when he was, uh, uh, particularly when, when he was abroad and he spent almost six months of every year on the polo circuit in, in England. Uh, but she ignored all these warnings, uh, warnings that were coming from uh, other members of her family, warnings that were coming from her, from her associates. Uh, one can only surmise that she was just, well, head over heels in love with Jai, of course, but somehow uh, bedazzled by the prospect of perhaps swapping uh, a life in a uh, you know, fairly remote, um, quite small princely state, Kuch Baha, uh, for the uh, almost Arabian Nights-like romantic quality of, of Jaipur with its fabulous palaces and forts and Rajput heritage and so on. But uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, uh, that doesn't really come out in the book. Um, in her own memoir, but uh, I think that that's from just what, what I surmised from, you know, reading around the topic uh, and looking at what other people were saying about, the, about that, that that's, that's really what it was all about. Gayatri Devi's uh, life was when there were strong winds of change blowing across India and there were political changes happening, India's independence, the merger of the princely states. And then what propelled her into you know, national and international headlines was her decision to join politics. So how do you mm. see her foray in politics and especially something which is discussed about is her equations with uh, Indira Gandhi. So what can you tell us about that? Yes. Look, um, Indira Gandhi and, and Gayatri both attended school in Shantinaketan. And uh, from what I've read, uh, you know, uh, Indira formed a... a a dislike for Gayatri even at that early stage because Gayatri was a bit of a tomboy. She was prettier than, than Indira. You know, she, you know, stuck out the back and had cigarettes and she was uh, a bit of a rebel even at that time. So, so the, the two women, you know, didn't get off to a good start. Uh, when Gayatri, of course, entered politics, she joined the Swatantra Party, which was the main opposition bloc to Congress uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, 
I think when you get two very strong women uh, entering, you know, uh, fighting it out on the political arena, you know, sparks are going to fly. Uh, and, and of course, uh, both Nehru, I mean, uh, um, Indira Gandhi uh, inherited her uh, dislike of the princes and the princely states. Uh, and the rulers um, and, and the opulence and everything and uh, the dissolute lifestyles of the of the Indian princes. I mean, she, you know, uh, her opinions of those states were very much uh, those of her fathers. Uh, and so, uh, when um, Gayatri Devi contested her first election for the Swatantra Party and won in a landslide. Uh, you know, eclipsing any electoral victory that uh, Indira uh, had had achieved. Um, you know, she, she, you know, of course, earned uh, in Indira's wrath, and then continued. You know, uh, you know over three elections that she contested. Uh, you know, to 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 win uh, seats at, at, in the Lok Sabha. Um, so, and and of course. Uh, uh, you know, in, in those days, um, in the early 60s, Congress was uh, starting to get a little bit on, on the nose and the princes, not only in, in Rajasthan, but in other states like uh, Madhya Pradesh and Orissa and so on, were um, proving to be very effective campaigners, uh, you know, had considerable uh, pulling power when it came to uh, gathering votes and they were seen as a, as a, as a threat to, to Congress. So, uh, and, and Gayatri was, uh, you know, one of the, the leading princely politicians. And of course, uh, you know, Indira wouldn't, couldn't stomach that. So one of the most uh, interesting and traumatic phases of Maharani Gayatri Devi's life was during the uh, emergency in the 1970s when she was imprisoned in uh, Tehar jail. And the most uh, famous story, very popular across India, is the story of the great treasure of Jaipur kept in the Jagat fort and the so-called uh, trucks uh, full, of, full of treasure, you know, going to uh, Delhi and the Delhi-Jaipur highway being closed for several days and all. So as a biographer and as a researcher on the Royal House of Jaipur, now what is your perspective on the story of the great treasure? Well, you know, I, I'm I'm firmly of the belief that there was no treasure ever found. Um, and look, my, my I spoke to lots of people, but Prithvi Raj Singh, um, so Jai's uh, uh, son uh, from his uh, second marriage, was present there when the uh, uh, Indian Army was uh, um, excavating Jai Gar Fort and, and and searching for this treasure. You know, he was. Uh, sure that that uh, uh, nothing had been found aside from a few rusty swords and uh, um, you know some armor and a few little bits and pieces of of, of jewelry, and uh, uh, I, you know I, I find it hard to believe these stories that uh, uh, you know there was a curfew imposed on, on on the area for seven days while these you know supposed columns of of trucks uh, uh, were making you know. Uh, winding their way up to Jaigar Fort and leaving loaded down with with, with jewelry, uh, something like that is a pretty hard to keep uh, to keep quiet, uh, you know, in, in a densely populated area like that. So I, I, I doubt that there was um, uh, any treasure found. That there had been treasure uh, that uh, buried there, that it was a repository for treasure, um, almost certainly yes. Uh, well, you know, we, we, we know that, uh, you know, Man Singh, when he came back from his campaigns in Kabul, uh, you know, diverted camel loads of, of loot uh, to Jaipur and, uh, and had that stored up in Jaigar. But, uh, you know, Jai Singh II uh, probably used it to, to build the modern city of Jaipur when it was uh, moved from, uh, the capital was moved from Amber. The rest of that treasure probably... Uh, it was moved sometime after independence, it seems. Um, uh, some of it ended up in various palaces uh, scattered around uh, 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 Jaipur, such as Moti Dungri, and so on. And, and, uh, and then it was later unearthed 
by, uh, you know, during various raids by tax department officials and so on. But the story of the Jaigar treasure being uh, <laughs> discovered and then uh, carted away, uh, I find hard to believe. And I couldn't find anyone who, who could verify that at all. Today, you know, Jaipur is a very different city, you know, with the young population and the IT industries and, and, and a very, very vibrant city. So uh, what do you think is, is her quality, which makes, you know, young Indians connect with her and, you know, it, it appeals to her story, appeals to uh, people even today. So how, how do you see that? Well, look, um, yeah, it, is, it is an inspirational story. I mean, she had to... Um, you know, that, that she overcame numerous obstacles. I mean, we've been over them before, we've been over them already. I mean, uh, being the Jai's third wife, difficult enough as it is, um, uh, as, as, as that situation would be, uh, coming in, coming into uh, Jaipur as a complete outsider, great deal of suspicion uh, surrounding her, working very hard to uh, promoting women's education, uh, setting up the Maharani Gayatri Devi School, which is still there, and then other schools after that. But then, of course, her political career, which was, uh, you know, quite uh, quite remarkable, and you know, certainly an inspiration, I'm sure, for for would be for many uh, young people. Getting over Jai's death. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, her family life was was just one seemed to be one tragedy after another. I mean, all the Male members of the Kuch Bihar dynasty drank themselves to death before the age of fifty. Uh, you know, um, her sisters had uh, broken marriages and also had early deaths. Her, uh, uh, she suffered after the loss of her mother. Just a couple of years later was when Jai died. Baya, her, her brother, died around that time as well. Um, her incarceration in Tihar jail, all these challenges, all these tragedies that, that she faced and yet overcame, I think that's that would certainly be inspirational, you know, an inspiration for anyone. So, you know, she was a remarkable figure. Um, you know, she was, uh, I think she could be a difficult person at times. Uh, people talk about her generosity, of course, and her, um, you know, commitment to her causes, but there are others who found her uh, sort of a bit arrogant and opinionated. And, uh, you know, if, if you were her friend, you were probably a friend for life. If she didn't like you, then you know, uh, she, she would make that very clear and perhaps even make life difficult for you. So, yeah, look, she was, uh, uh, you know, she was no saint, but she was no, but, but you know, she, she and, and too, I mean, she had relationships after Jai's death. Um, she didn't, uh, didn't make didn't make a big song and dance about them, but you know everybody in Jaipur knew she was a, a strong, liberated um, uh, woman, uh, very sure of what she wanted in life, and very sure about uh, about how to get it. Mm -hmm.